Yo, 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 what up, YouTube fam? We back with another one. And today, we're going to be talking about the racial tension on YouTube that seems to be carrying over into the California state penal system, a.k.a. state prisons in the county jails, and inevitably into the streets. Once again, like clockwork, guess who dead smack dab in the middle of it? <laughs> you guessed it. Mr. Gilligan, 22 a.k.a. Adam 16, a.k.a. the lord and ruler of a messy-ass channel we call No Jumper. But to his defense, can't blame it all on him. It all really starts with set-hopping-ass Snoopy Badass. So about two, maybe three years ago, Wack Boy 100 and Snoopy had some type of beef outside of the internet to where Wack had Snoopy checked by the Compton Pie rules and he had to pull up and run a couple fades. And to his credit, from what we all know, he pulled up and handled his like he was supposed to. But then, he got to run in his mouth, disrespecting his own hood, dissing his homies, just basically getting too big-headed. I don't know if he was put off or if he just separated himself from the Hollywood Pyrus, but he stopped banging Pyru and made up his own shit called the Los Angeles Mafia. They rock blue and red rags. Combined <laughs> in California. Tell me where you ever heard of that. At. I'll wait. Shit, he even took it as far as getting the blue and red Chuck Taylor tattooed on his face. That's crazy. So, long story short, shit died down for a while. Then news resurfaced that Snoopy Badass was about to be the first artist signed to the legendary Death Row Records by none other than Snoop Dogg, aka Uncle Snoop. And Wag Boy 100 didn't like this, not all. Not one bit. It seems like the whole time we thought the beef died, but Wack was just doing his digging, and he brought it all out. I mean, all of the bullshit that Snoopy did in the past. Come to find out, Snoopy Badass is originally a neighborhood crip from either Moreno Valley or Paris, Riverside, somewhere in the IE. We don't know. Well, actually, we do know. He was going by Sly Blue. So he was the, officially he was, he was from Sly Blue the third. neighborhood. The third. So the he tramp. was the baby. Uh. So he, the tramp. All right. So he was basically, he was from the hood. Did you, uh, how long he was from the neighborhood? How long he was from Paris? He was from the hood for at least, maybe at least two years, bro. But this nigga was grown. Oh, he was grown? How old Cuz was when he got put on Paris? He must have been like 18 because he was 20 last time I, when he when he jumped in, switched over to Hollywood. See? You heard it there yourself. But that's not all, man. Wack also exposed him for being a witness in a murder case where the suspect received a life sentence. So the story goes, and this is from Snoopy Badass's accounts himself. Him and a friend was walking to a store somewhere in the IE where they witnessed a murder take place. And apparently, to him... They ran, but later returned to the scene afterward to see the aftermath. But when they returned, the victim's family was present and mistaked them for the shooters and opened fire on them, killing Snoopy's friend while Snoopy got away. According to Snoopy, when he seen his friend get hit and fall, he ran directly to his homie's house to tell the family where his homie's mom then made him return to the scene and give a statement to the police from what he said. And that was supposedly the end of it until Wack did what Wack Boy 100 does best, a little bit more digging, and found out that Snoopy actually took the stand on the individual and gave a way more detailed account of what happened than what he told the Internet. Once this information surfaced, Snoopy once again came out to clear his name, but really just dug a deeper hole in typical Snoopy badass fashion. Story goes he was locked up fighting his own attempted murder when he ran into the suspect in his partner's murder trial in the court tank, which is already a red flag, blue flag, depending on what year you want to relate this to. <laughs> because the police wouldn't make that mistake. They make mistakes, don't get me wrong, but I ain't never heard of them making a mistake that drastic in my life. So I was already on edge, suspicious. 
Then he went on to say that the dude approached him asking for him to take the stand and say he was not trying to kill the man. It was just a fit of rage in order for him to not receive the death penalty. Well, let me correct myself. Not a fit of rage. He wanted to say that it was a crime in the heat of passion. So the death penalty will be taken off the table. Snoopy claimed he agreed and did that. But man, I don't give a fuck what the situation is. If you kill my homie, I ain't finna help you get off under any circumstances. He talk about, oh, you know, street nigga, we want him back on the streets and stuff. They're not, nah, nigga. That's not what it was. Because if that was the case, you would have never got him locked up in the first place. Because you gave an original statement. You thinking you going to run a loop around people. Niggas is listening closely. And the internet got a whole lot more detectives than the police department. So <laughs> you ain't going to win. And once that information came out, that nigga got detained from death row records and disappeared again for about a year. But... <laughs> Like I said, in typical Snoopy badass fashion, nigga popped back up on this super blooded shit out of nowhere. After he done let us all know he ain't a pyro no more. Fuck his hood, this, that, and the third. This nigga done popped back up super blooded. Mad at none other than <laughs> Gator Mac, a.k.a. Mr. 55th Street himself. Because the nigga took his baby mama. Buddy get on the internet, getting all emotional over a bitch he claimed he don't care about. But I can't even blame him. If Crip Matt fuck my being, I'll be embarrassed in the motherfucker too. So I can't really be mad at him at that. But I ain't finna crash out over the bitch. But then again, that nigga need the clout. Any clout he can get, because I ain't never heard nothing about him musically. Shit, to keep it funky, he, he make people not even want to go listen to his music. Just off your personality, man. If you want to be on this internet, you want to be a, a blogger, or uh, I don't even know what he's going to consider himself, but you got to be likable. Motherfuckers, your own homies don't like you. You think the internet going to like you? And I'm sure all y'all can agree with me on that one. Let's just keep it funky. But to get back to the story... You know Mr. Messy 22 ain't finna let no opportunity pass him up. So what'd he do? He gave that nigga a platform. And Snoopy did what he does best. Crashed the fuck out. <laughs> nigga let them bait him into speaking on the case again. And the crazy part is, he explained it like he telling the truth. I don't know if this nigga delusional, if he's slow, or he just... The blood version of Crip Mac. But the truth gonna eventually come out. It's inevitable. You know what I mean? Like, niggas got cell phones in jail now. The word gonna get back. So long story short, him and Brick Baby then end up having a moment where the internet claims that he pressed Brick Baby. And I'm on the fence with that one. That's a whole nother story in itself. But that led to a back and forth between them and... Snoopy went and made a diss track on Brick. Not knowing that Brick already had an ace up his sleeve. So on an episode of the No Jumper Show with Desto Dub and I think it was Adam 16 and Brick. They revealed that they got the real truth about the case. And the suspect who was doing life actually called in on the interview that they did with a dude named G-Face. I don't know who dude is. But he definitely looking for a job on No Jumper. It ain't hard to tell. So it comes out that Snoopy left out one key main point. The killer was a Mexican, a Hispanic. Which, in all reality, debunks his whole story. Um, Adam just tipped me off. You feel me? He said some Hispanic dude that I've never met then came up there and called the alleged suspect in my case. Um, for one, I like to add, shouldn't know Hispanic or Southsider or anything that I've never met, that I never was locked up with, that I've, um, never even had no problems with, be in these politics and these business anyway. You know what I'm saying? This is black business. And no disrespect to the Hispanic community, but from our understanding, a lot of y'all can tell on blacks 
and y'all homies won't won't even get on y'all for that. See now the problem I got with that is, first off is check my boy's temperature. You want to talk about the better man y'all racing this that and third? That's the goddamn problem. When it come to your race, you want to make this song this that and third, and niggas ain't did nothing wrong. But besides, bring out the information that you kept dangling in front of niggas' faces. Like, the truth going to come out. It seemed like you want the truth to come out. Because if I knew I was a snitch and I knew I had all this shit under my belt, I'm just going to be quiet and make music. But nah, nigga, you, your music ain't doing what it's supposed to do. So you can you reach and use any lifeline and cloud that you got to... Put yourself on a bigger pedestal, I should say. And fuck all that. Let's hear what G-Face had to say. First and foremost, dog, you said that my people, the double S, my dog, we tell on your people, and it's okay. It's not ratting, dog. Now, let's make it clear, homie. Your own people have paperwork on you snitching, number one. But you say you don't condone that, okay? You say you don't condone hood hopping, but you a self-admitted hood hopper. Just, just explain that, bro. You yourself say you're a hood hopper, correct? You admit that shit, but yet you say it's wrong, and you're over here promoting a complete different person's song, bro. Like, you an idiot, number two. Number three, you know how I said that your people is the one that be literally saying that, you know, if, if you're a rapist or you're a child molester, y'all give them passes? Bro, I'm speaking facts. I'm not trying to disrespect nobody. And that right there... You contradict yourself because you don't group the whole black car against the whole south side car over a buster who looks like ain't nobody finna claim. So that right there, that in the video explains my title because this shit can get real dangerous, get real tricky. This nigga, G Face who self-admittedly ain't no hood hopper, but self-admittedly ain't from no hood. He an Armenian that roll with the Southsiders as they do in L.A. when he got locked up. So you ain't doing nothing but antagonizing a whole lot of funk when technically, when it hits the streets, you ain't going to have nothing to do with it. You just running with the clout, trying to get you a no-jumper employment, which is understandable. You need some type of streaming income because self-spoken, you just fresh out, but and this ain't healthy. So I'm going to end it on that. And y'all let me know what y'all think. Is this fake-ass street beef, whatever you want to call it, because that nigga ain't even really no street nigga. Is it worth it? Because... There's a lot of people that could possibly get physically hurt. Because we all know how this shit go in California when it comes to the race car. So, with that said, man, y'all like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what y'all think, man.